the little black ant wandered about till she lost her way. Till at last, she found a big toadstool. Ah, here I can rest she said. And she wearily sank to the ground, and as she sat resting, she saw a light. And a glow worm came twinkling by. Dear me, exclaimed he, with a gasp and a sob. I don't think I'll ever be dry. Enter Mr. Stag Beetle and the newspaper reporter. Come in, sir, come in, said the little black ant, there is plenty of room, sir, for two. Bring in your light, sir, and sit down by me. Or else you'll surely be wet. The glow worm agreed, and soon brought in his light. Then, a cricket appeared on the scene. With her fiddle and bow. She's a minstrel, you know. She'd been to a concert in town. Come in, ma'am, come in, said the little black ant. Here is shelter and light for us all. And if you could play us a nice little tune. We might fancy we were at a ball. Then, Mr. Beetle arrives. Here, here, said the voice of the stag beetle, who was passing that way. And if there is dancing, I hope, dear Miss Ant, that you will allow me to stay. Come in, sir, come in said the little black ant. The more, the merrier. And here, is my friend Mrs. Snail. As busy as ever, I see. Come in, Mrs. Snail, said the little black ant. Come join our small party tonight. Here's the beetle and cricket all snug and dry. And the glow worm to give us some light. So the snail came and joined them, knitting away. And the cricket got her fiddle out. And then, you just should have seen how they danced. They jumped and all scampered around. Then Mrs. Toad breaks up the party. The little black ant danced quite well. The beetle did a foot shuffle. And as for the glow worm, he just jumped around. And made up his own dance. But all of a sudden a croaking was heard. And who should appear but a toad, then what a commotion. The little black ant went from one fainting fit to another. The snail simply shut herself up in her house. And thought she'd escape all the bother. The beetle and glow worm soon took themselves off. And the cricket and ant went with them too. Once more these poor creatures were out in the rain. And didn't know what they should do. But they presently came to the trunk of a tree. And there they all stayed for the night. But they never forgot that mean old Mrs. Toad, who gave them so dreadful a fright. Mrs. Toad certainly succeeded in making a fuss, your Aunt Amy said, feeling it necessary to make some comment. Then, Mrs. Mercer went on to talk about Mr. Thomas Cat's narrow escape. Yes, almost as much as Mr. Man did when he tried to drown Mr. Thomas Cat the other day. It seems that Mr. Thomas had been out in the stable stealing the food which was left for Mr. Towser, 